Hi, my name is Peach. Let me not waste your time. Today I'll be showing you how to do the faux 3D effect in DaVinci Resolve. Let's get started. All right, right now we're in a fusion composition that is 24 frames long. And before I start, I actually have a setting on that you guys don't have on. So let's just go down here to the bottom right where it has your megabytes and the percentage. Just double click that over here. And then it brings up these fusion setting controls. You can look through it if you want. But the one I'm going to use is the splines and go up to auto smooth and then check the splines. It just auto smooths your animations. And that's going to be useful throughout this. And yeah, and I'm just going to add it back our nodes so you can see what we're doing right here and connect that to the art media out then i'm going to add a merge node and then we're going to add a bunch of nodes first so let's go up here i'll hit shift space and then type in s ellipse i'm gonna hit shift enter and that's going to keep the panel up and we're going to have our node on the graph then we're going to type in s transform hit shift enter again and then we're going to do s render add that there and then might as well add a merge node as well just like that and now i'm just going to line these up so they're right underneath each other just like this maybe space them out just a little bit like that and then we're going to copy this and then paste it so we're going to have our bottom layer right here we're going to have our top layer over here and then in the middle i'm going to paste another version of this and then we're going to have our middle layer right here and but instead of using an s ellipse we're going to use an s rectangle so s rectangle type that in and then we're going to connect that to our s transform and then we'll link all these up together and actually we don't need this merge node we can just connect this to the merge right here and we want this to be on the back end so it needs to be connected to the yellow input so we can just hit Control t and that switches it around and the same thing for over here Control t and we're going to merge this on top of our merge one right here next i'm going to add a custom tool so shift space custom tool and this allows us to have controls that we could link to certain values we're going to have on these nodes and just so we can control our rig more efficiently but i'm going to go to the config and i'm going to open up these panels over here and we're going to shut off the number three uh, number four all of these just going to leave these two numbers up here for these number controls and just get rid of all of these so the panel looks clean just like that and let's get rid of the light controls all right go back to controls as you can see there's just our numbers right there i'm actually going to pin this over here all right once we have all our nodes here i'm going to rename them so we know which ones we're going to use so the s ellipse we just hit f2 and then i'm just going to name it top and then the s ellipse one over here i want to name bottom and the one in the middle i'm going to name middle so we know what we're looking at and i'm also over here i'm going to do top and do transform for t and then i'm going to do over here i'm going to do bottom or bot then t right there and so now we have those and we can reference them easily and so let's click the top node and we need to link the number one control with the width over here so we're going to use expression for that so all we need to do is double click the value over here hit the equal sign click out of it and then we have this expression panel pop up and we're just going to hit this plus sign and then drag this to the number one control over here and so now this value is connected with this value here and as you can see it widens and shortens the ellipse and then we just double click that to reset that and i'm going to do the same thing for the bottom going over here set an expression link this to the number one and now we're going to go over here to our middle one and we're actually going to link the width for this one with the number two over here so now we have that going and now whenever this opens up and moves it also needs to move with the middle over here but it needs to be on the edge of this middle so how do we do that we do it with these two transforms so we just click these and we're going to go to the x offset we're going to create an expression with that we're going to link that to the number two over here but then we need to divide this by two and now this value will be stuck exactly to the edge of that square just like that and yeah we're going to do the same thing over here with the bottom transform click the x offset put an equal sign and link that to the number two and then this time we're going to do divided by negative two and that should have our rig just like this and i'm actually going to color this so you can see a difference let's see let's do this like at 50 percent gray then we have our bottom and middle are going to be the same color just like that now using the rig that we have over here we could animate what we want our circle to look like so when this is five this needs to be zero and this is how it kind of gives our rotation looking effect so let's start keyframing at the end i want it to look like this so i'm gonna go to the end of our comp we're gonna keyframe these values at 0.5 and 0 0.0 and at the beginning i want this to be opposite keyframe over here we want this to be zero and we want this to be 0.5 so we have something like this and then you can see it has a little bit of animation like that but it kind of morphs it doesn't do the exact rotation look that we're going for so let's go to the middle and we're going to keyframe there and then we're going to keyframe our size the way that we want it to look and so we want the middle to be about like that and so now if we do something like this it kind of looks like it's rotating better just like that and yeah for the most part that is your bow 3d rig now we're going to do some more things that make it look like it has a more of a cartoony look so i'm going to bring these merges down like this and then i'm going to add an sm outline tool if you don't know what sm outline tool is it basically makes an outline around the shape that we have and we want this to be around this one i actually we need to be below all these as renders don't know how to get the sm outline tool i have a video over here that goes over the best free presets to get and it shows you how to install the sm outline tool from smokey over there i'm just going to add the sm outline 
and then we're going to change the color to black just like this and then i'm going to copy this and then paste it with these other ones over here just like that and you can see here that this line is actually being seen and we don't want that because it gets rid of the illusion so what we're going to do is we're actually going to add a merge node after the s render over here make sure that it goes underneath there then we're going to add this s render to the merge over here so now we have this shape over here and that's merged on top so it just doesn't mess up with that now let's say we want to put something on the end of our shape over here like on the cap right over there so what we're going to do is we're going to add another merge node below this it messes everything up again and then we're going to let's say add like a p so let's do that and then we're going to add two transform nodes after that and one's going to control the rotation so i'm going to rename that to be rotation and the other one is going to tr control all the other things that we need for it so let's do that let's just size up our p to be the way that we want it just like that and then let's go over to our transform node the way that's going to work is we're going to uncheck the size over there so we just have the x size and that controls what we did for our cap and so we're we're going to add an expression to this link this over to the number one and so now it goes like that and we need to times that by two so it normalizes the value and so now we have our letter adding like the cap and then what we need to do is add a modifier to our center point go over here gonna go modify width go down to xy path go to our modifiers and then uncheck this animation over here and we need to have rp connected to this edge right where the cap is what we're going to do is something similar we did for the cap over there we're going to do this the equal sign add an expression there but we actually can't pick whip when we're in the modifiers tab so we just need to type it so we're going to do middle dot width like that and then we have this over here and then we need to adjust this so over so take this and divide this by two that'd be like that and then we're going to put this in parentheses and then add this with point five and then now it'll be in the right position that we need it right there just like that and if we want we could also animate the rotation so it looks like it's spinning but i'm not going to do that what i did add in the example is i added a background node over here so i'm going to add a background node put this merge this on the merge two put this on the sm outline and this is actually change this to gray so you can actually see the outline and then we're going to change the background color let's do a gradient and i'm going to put the bottom of the gradient over here just holding down alt and hitting tab to hit down and adjust the other point and then just have something like this and right now it only has 24 frames so if we try and time remap it like a lot of people do for their photo 3d to make a smooth animation it's not going to work as well as we want so what i'm going to do is going to copy all these nodes over here control a control c then i'm going to go to a different fusion composition and let's just put this over here and let's make this one like five seconds around there and that should be good into that fusion composition we're going to paste the nodes that we have here and then replace the immediate out with the one that's in here and now we're going to hit control a and then open up our spline, go down to our number controls, control A, go over here, and then let's zoom out. Then I'm gonna hit this button over here, which allows us to time stretch our animation. So it gives us a proportionally scaling tool that allows us to have our animation and drag out just like that and then hit that tool off and now we have our animation doing really slowly but now we have all these frames in between that we can now time remap and so i'm gonna go over here and then add a time stretcher node time stretcher and i'm just gonna go to our beginning make sure it's the beginning we don't have a keyframe there if it is keyframe it off and then we have our beginning keyframe at zero and then our end is going to be keyframed at 119 right where 119 is 119 there we go so we go to our spline and then actually make this whatever spline that we want but we actually want to go down to 24 frames and then we could just adjust it for our second that we want it like this and so now we could do something like this where it starts off really slow and then it goes super fast just for these 24 frames and we actually want to make sure it's on interpolation mode nearest we don't want it to be blending any frames just like that and now we have that but say we only want it for that 24 frames we go over here compound clip it so i'm gonna right click it go up to compound clip i have it bound to c so we do it really easily do that create it then we're going to shorten this down to where we have it and then play it back and we will have our animation the way that we want it and time remapped to the way that we want it as well also make sure that it's cached inside of our compound clip and once that's cached then we will have a nice playback I play that back should be super smooth just like that the last thing that i did add to this is actually filter with a noise on it so i'm gonna show you to do that right now we're gonna take this and we're going to put in filter we have this and mine's already on the grain because i have it saved on a preset but go over filter type go down to grain and let's put the scale up to four the blend up all the way and then i put animated on now we have a little bit of grain on our animation to make it break up the mundaneness of what we have before and then we could catch this and then play it back real quick there we go we have our faux 3d shape if you're interested in other motion graphic tutorials click this playlist right here which is my MoGraph monday series where i go over a bunch of motion graphic adjacent effects if you're interested in learning about those otherwise subscribe and have a good day